Now we're going to look at the Arnold layer shader, which can combine multiple materials and mask them off from one another. We'll want to employ that in this case for the buttons here, which are composed of a hard plastic and a paint layer. I've got a version of the scene in which I've assigned materials to all of the objects. And we don't have time to cover that process for every single material, but if you have the exercise files provided with these movies, you can take a look at those materials on your own in the material editor. For now, let's launch the Arnold Render View. Click in the Perspective View. Go to Arnold, Arnold Render View. And we can initiate the interactive production rendering. As that begins to render, we see that there are some issues here on the LCD screen. We're getting some strange glitching. And if we orbit in the Perspective View with Alt and Middle Mouse, it kind of flickers and does some strange things. This is happening because the back surface of the glass is exactly coincident with the front surface of the LCD screen. We can just move that glass forward a little bit in order to create a gap. Select the glass object, go to the Move tool, and we see a Y position of 1.688 centimeters. Let's move that forward ever so slightly. Set this to a value of 1.687 centimeters. And now we've created enough of a gap there that we don't have that problem, which is technically called Z fighting. That's when the renderer doesn't know which surface is in front and which is behind. Now the next thing we want to do is just to do some cleanup from the previous movies. If we select one of these buttons and zoom in with the Z key, we'll see that it's composed of some triangles. That's because of the unwrap UVW modifier that we applied earlier. That's causing surfaces to be tessellated according to the viewport settings. We don't need that anymore. So to avoid any problems in rendering, we can delete the unwrap UVW. I'll close the Arnold Render View. And we previously created a selection set. Up here on the main toolbar, we can choose the selection set textured objects. Those are all the objects that have the unwrap UVW modifier applied. Go to the Modify panel, select the Unwrap UVW modifier, and click the trash can. And now we don't see that triangulation, and we won't have any issue rendering these body objects. OK, we're ready to create our layered shader. We want to select just one of these buttons and open up the Material Editor. And in the Material Editor menus, choose Material, Get from Selected. We have a material here which is called Plastic Hard Black. Let's make a clone of that. Select just that material node and nothing else. Hold down Shift and drag to create a copy. Disconnect the normal input. Select that new node and rename it. We'll call it Label White. Then assign it to the selected button. Click the button to assign the material to the selection. And we'll make some changes. Click on the base color swatch. Bring that all the way up to a value of 1. And likewise, we'll bring the roughness up to 1, the specular roughness. We're temporarily making this an ideal diffuse material because we want to check our exposure once again. I've changed the environment here. I've got a black floor instead of a white floor, and that's actually going to change the exposure. So in order to get proper exposure, let's do an Arnold Render View again. So with focus on the Perspective View, go back to Arnold, Arnold Render View, and reinitiate that. Once again, if we display the pixel information by clicking on the gear and going to the Pixel tab, we can hover our mouse here, and it's showing us that even though this is an ideal diffuse, it's kind of underexposed. So because we've changed our environment, we have less bounce light, and in order to get a properly exposed preview, we should increase the light from the Sky Dome. So let's select that Sky Dome. Back in the Modify panel, we've got the Color Intensity rollout, Let's bring the exposure up to 2.3. And once again, give focus to that perspective view. And as we move our mouse around, we're getting better exposure here. The RGB values are never going above 1. All right, so we can close that. And now we're ready to go back to our material editor. I've got that minimized. And we've got two materials here. We've got our label white and our plastic hard black. Let's bring our label white down We've got it at an ideal diffuse, but we'll bring our base color down to 0.9. And 
and also bring the roughness down to 0.9 as well. That's a bit more realistic. Now let's create the layered shader. And we can do that in the Material Map Browser under Materials, Arnold, Surface, Layer Shader. Drag that over, select it, and we'll rename it. We'll call it Buttons Label Black. We can connect up to eight inputs and eight mix inputs, which will create a mask. So we want to connect our label white and our plastic black. The stacking of the inputs is such that a higher numbered input is going to be in front of a lower numbered input. So it's the opposite of the modifier stack. Things that are higher in the interface here are actually lower in the stack or it's behind whatever's below it. So that's a little bit strange, but once we know that, we can set this up the way we want it. We're going to connect the label white to input one. And you might wonder why, because you might think that the label would be on top of the plastic, but it's because the map that I'm going to use has a white background and black lettering, and black is transparent, whereas white is opaque. So we actually want to reverse the front and back relationship here because the image that I'm using is actually reversed or inverted. Okay, so we also want to connect the plastic hard black to input two. That's going to be on top or in front. Let's go ahead and assign this. I can reselect that button and with that layered shader selected, assign the material to the selection and it turns black. And that's what we expect because plastic black is in front and it has a mix value of one. If we reduce that mix value, we'll make it transparent and reveal the layer below it. Okay, we'll bring that mix to back up to its maximum of one. Now we need a map to create the mask between these two materials. I've got that prepared. And in this case, it's a vector map. And vector maps are legacy 3ds Max maps. And even if you have legacy 3ds Max map support enabled in the render setup under system, even if this is turned on, many of the legacy maps may be hidden in the material map browser. So even though you can apply it, it may be invisible. We can work around that by going up to the material map browser menu, which is this down facing arrow. Click on that and enable show incompatible. Let's create a vector map and that's going to be under maps, general, and near the bottom, vector map. Drag that over into the view, select it, and rename it graphics. Then browse for the vector file. That's going to be in the current project scene assets images, so I'll navigate to that folder. And it's called graphics buttons.svg. Click open. And then we can assign that to the mix2 input. Connect that to mix2. And there you go. Now we've got a mask between these two materials. If we go to our label white material and, for example, change its color, we can see that update in the Arnold render view. Okay, I'll cancel that change. Now I can just select all the other buttons and assign that material to all of them. So we can back out in the perspective view, control, alt, and middle mouse. And I want to select all these buttons, including this one up here. Just control, select all of those. And with all those buttons selected back in our material editor, we can select that layered shader and choose assign material to selection. And in the Arnold render view, we see that now we've successfully applied a masked layered shader to all of those objects.